Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look inside the Premiere Helpful Play Xbox for the month of December. So let's open it up. I know what's inside. And then make something with it. Oh, isn't this festive? Got the red and silver maggots. All right, so I already could see some acrylic paint, so it looks like, yeah, we have some golden acrylic paints. This is the color uh, yellow. We also have titanium white, follow blue in the red shade, the magenta, and I think that's it for the colors. Yeah, that's it for the colors. So we have these four colors. If we dig into the maggots, let's see what else is in here. Oh, a very long, looks like an oil painting brush. This is a number eight white sable Robert Simmons 760B flat brush. White paint brushes are pretty and all, but like they never stay that way. Okay, we get to dig a little deeper. It looks like a small spray bottle. I wonder if this is for water or if something else. I suppose you could water down some acrylic paint. We'll see what they suggest. I feel like there's more maggots than usual. All right, here, I found the menu. Here we have some documentation for our golden fluid acrylics. So these are supposed to be a little bit softer than heavy body acrylics, but equally permanent and light fast. All right, interesting. There's so many different types of every single different type of art supply. Like, <laughs> it'll take a lifetime to actually have tried all of them, let alone get good at any of them, you know? <laughs> and then there's a list of all of the different colors that this brand offers. Okay, interesting. Today, oh, it looks like we have a couple panels. We have the artist panel for oil and acrylics with a smooth finish, six by six, acrylic primed and ready to use. And it's dark on one side and white on the other. And then there's another one even smaller smaller. This is a 4x4. Four four. And finally, a canvas panel with very interesting dimensions. It is 6 inches by 12 inches, and you get this kind of fun ultra-wide landscape or selfie portrait. <laughs> Let's compare the difference between this and what were these called? Artist panels? This looks like it's MDF with a coating to allow for paint to bond with it and then this is obviously as you'd be more familiar with it's a stretch canvas placed onto an mdf board so they both will provide very flat surfaces that won't warp when we're using them which have recently become like my more preferred things to paint on like i've tried stretch canvases and they're just so wobbly i haven't quite even got the hang of that but these are like closer to drawing on paper without the paper buckling and it's kind of cool but I've never tried this more smooth finish versus canvas. Get the box out of the way and take a look at everything that we got. So we got the three panels. We got the long paintbrush, the number eight wide, four colors of fluid acrylics by the brand Golden, and also a spray bottle, which we can use to like spritz our palette, keep the paints moist, I guess, and pliable. I 100% recommend having one of these on your desk if you like using paints. Whoa. If you like using any sorts of paints, I can't hold it. Or if you have a succulent or something. I have my own. It's just really, really handy. And sometimes when I'm super lazy and I don't want to get up and get a little bit of water out of the sink, I just use it from this. I think first step is to swatch out these paints because everything keeps saying that they're the consistency of heavy cream, which I've never painted with heavy cream, so... This will be an experience. Grabbed a paper plate to use as a palette. I also have some water for dipping the paintbrushes in. All right, let's go ahead and swatch these guys out. First, the yellow. So it's that it is sl it is pretty transparent, very glossy, very thin, and mildly tinting. But very interestingly, the white, the titanium white of the same paint is very opaque, very glossy, very thin, and high tinting. So I took a look into my stash of paint and I actually have one of these already in the color Burnt Umber Light. So I've apparently used fluid acrylics before. I don't know if they're actually any different than any other acrylic that I've ever used. They're very juicy compared to my like $1 paints that I usually use. Those are thick and you have to mix them. White, hey, red, white, and blue. And then yellow. Let's see how opaque they are. See if they cover over this marker illustration that's bleeding through. So magenta. You can definitely see through it. I don't know what I'm really testing. The white, which is supposed to be the most opaque, that darker green. And finally the yellow, which is not supposed to be very opaque at all. I don't know, it kind of looks the same as the other ones. I'm gonna go ahead and try and blend these together. Get a smooth gradient. 
before they dry. I do feel like they're already drying. If they are thinner paint, then they will probably dry faster, which is probably why they suggested we use a spray bottle. Blend that out into the white. I am a lover of like pastel colors, so I go through white paint like nobody's business. Boom, it turns out <laughs> it's this exact same stuff. So we have a little baby version and the big momo version. And I bought it to mix like with my other acrylic paints, you know, to get more pastel colors. And yeah, apparently it's a fluid acrylic. I was not paying attention, but this stuff works real nice. I don't currently have any complaints, but I would like to mix some of these darker colors with white and see how they look. Just go ahead and add a small dot of white near these two and blend them and see. You can get some pretty colors. And these are going to dry fast, so prepping these colors like this before I even know what I want to draw is not the smartest. Try and block out some shapes. Okay, I think I know what I like about these paints already. You don't get like a super dry, crunchy edge. You can get really smooth lines. Like you don't get that, uh, I don't know what it's called, but like when you get to the edge of a paintbrush and the paint's a little bit drier and you can see the paper through it. These are pretty. I really like these three pastel colors next to each other. Reminds me of springtime in the dead of winter. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if we could draw like a wintery scene with this because we have like a dark blue, light blue, and some white. Let me try to make a little gradient of that. See what that looks like. So I'm going to just throw in some of the dark blue. I'm going to grab some lighter blue on that same paintbrush. Kind of create a gradient. Moving upwards into the white. Does that look like a winter scene? Or just like water or something? Let me hold the paintbrush farther away and see what... Oh boy. I feel like I have zero control now. Not sure it's feeling wintry to me. It makes me think of like water and oceans a little bit more, especially if I add a little yellow, that would make it greener. But these paints do blend really fun. <laughs> they're so juicy. What I would like to do is probably grab a pencil and kind of see what that looks like under the acrylic paint. Like, do you see it? You can just barely see it. I bet when that dries, we can layer it up again. Okay, yeah, that is way more transparent. Look at that. What I would like to try to do though next, since it looks like they go over pencil pretty well, let me see which one. I'll choose this medium size guy. Okay, yeah, that works just fine. I don't know what I was worried about, <laughs> but it's always good to test. Oh, Leroy and Beluga are becoming close friends here. <laughs> Not entirely inspired by the color scheme, though I feel like we could make a nice landscape with like flowers and the sun. <laughs> Kind of just start sketching and I don't know, see what happens. We have the two other panels, so if it doesn't turn out, we can uh, try on those. See, a square canvas is a little tricky. If he wants to move into the ultra wide, because that's more interesting, right? I feel like you can really play with this canvas size and shape, you know? Like if you go this way, you can have like really long hair. If you go this way, you could do a landscape. Tickles the creativity is to kind of sketch with these boundaries in mind. So like, draw a really quick basic shape that's similar in proportion and then like sketch something out and see how that fits. Like you have a character with hair blowing. No, that's kind of boring. Wait, let's try this. Let's try it in portrait. You could draw like a Rapunzel kind of character with really long hair. Something like swirling, swirling around. You know, just kind of trying to black out the shape to see if it's kind of a pleasing, pleasant way to go about it. Something like this with like a swirly mermaid style dress. Kind of just playing around with shapes, seeing what looks good where. So kind of follow this same swoosh. That's kind of an interesting one. Although you kind of lose the mermaid shape of the dress with the hair. Unless you break up the hair a little bit more like add little spots where hair breaks up. That could be fun. Let me throw some color on it. I'm gonna try and not use blue because I'm weirdly gravitating towards the blue and I don't feel like it anymore. So maybe the dress is yellow. So then anywhere it's poking through, it'd also be yellow. And then maybe pink hair? Mm. What if I mix the pink with some yellow? Would that warm it up a bit? Or would that make it muddy? 
kind of made an orange color. And I could probably use the light blue as a background color. Kind of just blocking it out. Seeing if the color scheme makes any sense. Obviously I can't get too much detail with this brush on such a small working area. I lost a lot of the shape by throwing in the color. So there's a general idea that I might be able to work with. I think when I move on to the sketching on the actual canvas, I want to fill less of it with hair, if that makes sense, because it definitely is hiding the body way too much. Let's see, so I wanted the face up here. Oh, it's hard to draw on this. I had the character kind of like arching their back a little bit, which kind of came this way, which came into that like mermaid style swishy dress. Then the neck would be kind of here-ish. It's almost swan-like at this point. Let me see. Let me figure out where the face is. Might have to get a smaller paintbrush to do some of these details. And the arms kind of like just came forward a little bit. Keep the shape kind of a silhouette at this point. And then maybe for the hair. Do I want any sort of bangs or do I want it more pulled back? I'm also picturing like a big bustle on the back here, but I gotta wait and see where the hair ends up. I'm thinking a ponytail might be the most elegant way to go about this because then I have a much smaller area from which the hair can come from, which should subdue it a little bit. But if we have some coming like this, so let me just draw it as like ribbons. And maybe some coming the other way. Like that. But then there's not much happening up at the top. Kind of try to separate the hair from the skirt a little bit. Figure out what's going where. Because I want it to kind of intersect somehow. <laughs> I like how swishy it's looking. Not, I haven't really figured out the colors yet either. I'll probably have to go back to that. I just feel like drawing right now. Let's see, if this piece of hair stays where it's at, then you won't see here. So let me try and clean this up so I know what I can see and what I can't before I start adding paint because that's where I went wrong there. Because I want to make sure some body is showing. So this is that back arm. Let me push that back with a little bit of shading. This arm can come forward a little that we will see it a little bit more. Maybe we'll cut the dress off here. I'm going to darken up the lines where there should be nothing behind it, just background. And that should help me get a better idea of the shapes that we should be seeing. What if we make this a crown that her hair is being pulled back into? Ooh, that kind of fills that space a little bit more. See how it's intersecting up here at the top of the ponytail? I'm kind of working away around. You can see how at the beginning I sketched out some big rough shapes and now we have to go in and figure out what it actually looks like before I start adding in color. I want to make sure I include this line because I think that adds a lot of motion to the drawing because it shows the shape of the character. Because if we have too much hair coming in front here, you're not going to see that angle. And it might still end up that way, but <laughs> we're gonna try our best not to. And this is a tangent getting too close to the edge. So what I'm gonna do is just pull it all the way off the edge and then come back. Then this is the dress here. We have a piece of hair kind of breaking up. This part's the dress, this part's the dress. And then I have this hair going behind the dress. That way we see that shape. Hey, I think I'm learning from the mistake I made. <laughs> that's why mistakes are important, I guess. All right, I think that's it for the sketch. Because most of this is going to get obliterated when I add the color on top. So, uh, yeah, maybe I should uh, leave it there for now. In case I destroy it. All right, let's move Brett back into the color then. Ooh, I'm nervous. Should I do the background first? I also haven't even decided what color I'm using. I do like the way the pink and the yellow looks. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? It looks bad. I've done that before. And I'm still alive. Start with the paintbrush that they provided to add in the flat layers. But then if I need to add more detail, I'll probably switch to something smaller. Maybe I can have a gradient from light white, <laughs> light white, white to the yellow. But like, obviously it's gonna be light yellow to darker yellow, maybe at the bottom. Just some white. And then I'll blend from that into the yellow right on the canvas. And then I just have to go ahead and fill in the lines like a coloring book. That's step one. <laughs> and then after that dries, we want to go over another layer to try and get rid of any of the pencil lines. What would have been smart is to use like a colored pencil. That way they're not quite as harsh. That graphite -y color. Now for this bottom part of the skirt, I'm going to color each 
section separately and maybe even add a little bit more yellow to this one to kind of just add variation between them and hopefully make them stand out more and give that swishy shape instead of it being like one chunk of skirt. I didn't even look to see if there was a prompt word. I just sort of went in. Oh well. <laughs> we'll look at it afterwards and see if we can uh, pretend that we followed it. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink maybe. Here. This should push it back. Oh, now it looks like a different section. There you go. So you can kind of see how these look like separate sections now by shifting the color just slightly, both in tone and hue right there. Now this next one, I'll probably have to go a little darker. And then this back one right here, I want to be the darkest because it should be pushed backwards a lot. So I'm going to use the same color I used here for this middle section between those two. And that should give me a lot of opportunity for contrast. Now I'll probably try to do this one a similar color to that. Mm, this is making me think of lemonade. Now we want to make sure there's a very distinct line between these two. Otherwise it's probably going to get blended in in a later stage. Maybe a little bit more of that magenta. Now we don't want it too magenta because the hair is going to be pretty dark. So we don't want it to blend in with the hair either. That'll have to be something I look more into once I've added the hair. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell from here. I'd also like to add a little bit of shadow under here if I can. And make it look less like the hair is actually going through her and instead it's on top. Because it's on a different plane of existence. I guess since I know what this hair is going to be pink, then I can do that next. Let me start with a pretty light colored pink and then add shadows from there. Just to warm it up because it is a cool color. So this might muddy it. I don't really know how color theory works that much. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. All right, grab a paintbrush, grab some paint. Let's go at it, shall we? That's such a bubblegum pink. Ooh. I'm gonna try to do the same thing where I use different variations of the same color to kind of separate the different sections. So I want this to be a light color here. If it looks swishy when I'm done, mission accomplished. I like to set little simple goals so you don't go ew it's ugly or ew it's good. <laughs> but okay I did what I was set out to do sort of thing. It's a little sloppy up there. But once I figure out how many tones I have spread out throughout the piece I think I'll be able to fix that top section because that's probably that's probably going to be the most difficult just because there's so much happening in such a small amount of space. Let's paint the edge of this canvas too. I'm trying to use this thin part of the flat brush, but even that looks like it might be too thick. So when I do my second pass, I'm going to use a different paintbrush. <laughs> yeah, as the paint dries, it's getting a little bit thicker on the palette, which is creating that kind of like edge that I was talking about earlier. If you remember. <laughs> trying to do those edges that are like right on the edge of two different colors. It's stressful. I'm looking for a nice stress-free artistic experience. This ain't it. I'm gonna cover the graphite so I keep going a little closer. Oh, you know what I should have done? Shoot. I should have used my kneaded eraser and lightened up the sketch. That would solve a lot of these graphite problems, wouldn't it? And they'd be more subtle in the areas that I haven't quite painted. It would have just been a good idea overall. Then I'm going to use a slightly more light version of this same color here. I also want to kind of darken up one of these, but I probably should use a smaller paintbrush. Let me just block in a little here so I don't forget. Let's try this number one round. Well, it works better than the one I was using. It's so much smaller. Okay, so now like this area that's what I'm a little concerned about because like right now it's pretty sloppy and you can still see a lot of graphite but I want to get it to the point where I'm as happy as I am with this ray of sunshine down here at the bottom. So what we need to do is separate all the colors. So let me grab some dark and we'll add some serious contrast and then from there hopefully find some improvement. So this section is back here. Well, the plan I have in my mind is kind of just throw dark colors everywhere. <laughs> well, every other place. And then lighten up from there what needs to be lightened up. I think the most difficult part is the edges because my hand is just so shaky. All right, now for background, I was thinking like a light blue, but I don't know if that'll throw everything off. 
Maybe start at a darker blue and go down to white at the bottom? Or should I go dark blue, go to white at the top? Although if I wanted to do a gradient, I should have done it before I colored in the character, so that's probably not happening. But I think that's what I want to do next. Just make a very, very pastel blue color. Maybe add a little bit of yellow to it so it's a little greener. But I don't want it to interact too much with like the color scheme we've already got going on. So that's why I want it like really white. And hopefully this white paint layer will help blend out the blue too. Kind of like how Bob Ross always puts some liquid white on his <laughs> canvas before he paints. All right, so now with this, I'll grab a little bit of this light blue that I mixed and just start painting over the top. Oh yeah, see that's gonna be probably too dark. You grab some white and blend that. Blendy blendo. <laughs> that lightened it a bit. Still probably too dark. That's actually working really nice. I'm glad I did that. Now it kind of gives the illusion that they're glowing a smidge here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white along the edge and grab some more of my blue. Kind of blend that. Now the most pressing matter right now is probably the face. How do I want to do this? It's a little too close to the hair color, I think. Gotta try and find some contrast somewhere. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need a couple layers because I don't want it to look too muddy with all that graphite. Now the face. Ooh, nerve-wracking. I'm still using that smaller paintbrush for all this too. Okay, that's definitely gonna need another layer once that dries because it got super muddy. But it's an important step because if I don't do that, then the graphite will lift on the next layer. So will we work at this face? The face is usually what I spend the most time on. So I don't know why this would be any exception. I feel like I keep redoing the face over and 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 over again. Let me do some really dark lips this time. Okay, now she has no chin. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It might just be the lack of line art and I'm just so used to line art that I'm having a hard time appreciating this. Let's see if I can add like a nostril in here. Let's see if that makes a difference. <laughs> try one last thing. I'm gonna try lowering the chin a little. See if that makes any improvement the way I kind of envisioned this originally. Mm. Oh, you know what? The head's just too short. Wait. Maybe if I add a little bit more hair on the back of the head, kind of pull it back a little. And the ear's a little high now that I'm looking at it. Well, shoot, there was just a lot wrong, wasn't there? <laughs> a little bit of a landslide effect of changes. But does that look nicer? Contrast again, I think, is my problem <laughs> with this drawing. I just can't seem to quite get it, but I'm still working on it. It's something I consciously think about. Every time I'm painting or drawing. I don't know if it quite shows yet, but I'm working on it. I feel like I learned some stuff. And I accomplished my goal of having separate colors next to each other here and then up here as well. Which I'm pretty happy about. Do need to sign it though. Let me grab this guy. I have so much trouble with this. Ooh. Here we go, it doesn't quite fit in frame. There's my little acrylic painting on that, what is that? Six by 12 canvas. That was really fun. It was kind of interesting to play with like a different size. Forced me to be creative about like the pose and everything and the way it like comes off the edges. Oops. Still need to practice a lot of different things when it comes to acrylic painting. But I think I'm seeing slow improvement, which is the goal. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Also, thank you Palful for sending this box my way so that I could try it out and share with you guys. Oh, we were about to look at the prompts. They were holiday, cozy, gift, and excitement. <laughs> Don't think I really fit any of those. So I'm glad we didn't try to pigeonhole ourselves into one of those. <laughs> I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!